Hello and welcome to Lincoln Cast. This is the Giant Bomb Community Guild Force 2 podcast for the week of October 12th, and I am your host, not self confessed cynic. This is Durin. And joining me today is not Nubarama. It is Revan. I just want to crush things between my thighs because they're so assurable. For the first couple of seconds of that, you sounded like Noob, and that was scary. <laughs> I was worried. I am offended. <laughs> also joining us today is Thurbleton. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? You mean not Zumi Ramen? So yeah. not Zumi Ramen. I and, can try talking uh, with a British accent if you like. <laughs> was, that was almost a little bit of Australian, it's I felt pretty, like It's like there. the whole Commonwealth. I can never nail one country down. <laughs> Do the old Prospector voice. Just That'll be Zumi Ramen from now on. I'll just try the old Prospector voice all podcast long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting right now. You're not oh, doing that best. on podcast uh, long. That is the best. All right, so as you guys can probably tell, we have completely changed everything up this week. Uh, Cynic couldn't make the podcast, um, and neither could Noob. I think Noob was out, I don't know, getting eaten by bears or something. I don't know. I mean, a moose um, like doing some siege of some dictator in South Africa. Yeah, something. I, he's he's putting his plan in motion. That, that's all he really told me. I don't yeah. know what that means, but I figure we'll hear about it on CNN probably later this week. Um, require just to turn on CNN and then have something other than the election on. <laughs> Good luck. So, <laughs> but the show will go on. Um, we're going to probably have a bit of a shorter show this week, um, mostly because I don't know how to run a podcast, so we're just kind of winging it. Uh, so, first off, we're going to start off, as per usual, with what everyone's been playing. So, Revan, what have you been playing this week? Uh, a lot of XCOM and occasionally some NBA 2K13. All right, so with a lot of XCOM, how you how are you feeling on XCOM? Because I've played a little bit, like two missions of the tutorial so far. And All right, uh, I played the demo before I got the game, and I didn't really like the way that demo started off. Because I didn't like that they kind of just took a lot of the control from me to start with. But I- I've heard that that persists pretty much through the entire tutorial, so for like the first hour and a half or so of the game. Yeah. But then after that, I, it, it's so good. It's so it's- crazy. How oh, I don't know how to describe so with the, it. With the with the like the panic that sets in in Ryan Davis's face every time XCOM is brought up, <laughs> I I actually kind of feel okay as somebody who has never played an XCOM game before that they are holding your hands so much in those first you know hour to two hours because I I'm not really looking for, like. I I feel kind of like he like he described where like I'm not really looking forward to the the rampant difficulty that I've heard happens, but at the same time I fucking can't wait. I don't know if I've hit the part where it gets more difficult, and I'm pretty sure I don't want to. But there have been some crazy difficult missions, and some ridiculous things have happened. Well, I've heard it's when you hit the like the spinning saucer things or whatever. Like that's pretty much the tipping point for oh okay then i've hit the part where it gets real crazy and real difficult (laughs) fuck those things so so how many how many casualties so far um probably a good amount i haven't checked but i know (laughs) i want to say from the first group of like four people i had i have one person left well that's not counting the tutorial group because like those first three they, they just die there's nothing you can do about it yeah Okay. I mean, like, so past like, that. Past that. I actually okay. had like full okay. control. I have one person left, and I, was, and I only was, I know that's because I changed his name. Is it the original guy from the tutorial, <laughs> the one that lived? Yeah, the one that lived. I changed his name. <laughs> that's how I know he's there. See, the guy on my team that I know is going to live, like flat out. He is. He even even when he was a rookie, he was the last to go forward. <laughs> is the guy who has the guile hair because <laughs> You're I not, can't let him die. You can customize it. You know that, right? I, I know, but I already have him, so like he is the Guile guy for me now. You could change and his name to Guile. Guile guy, make him French. Guile guy, there you go. Guile guy, Guile guy. I, I can't even say it. All right, so other than other than XCOM, because we could go real deep into that, I think, even with yeah. the little I've played with, of it, and it sounds like you probably... It, I'm guessing you're probably, what, like maybe a third of the way through, through then? I, I don't know, because I spent a lot of the time... like preparing for that mission to assault the base that like that mission that you know ryan and jeff were oh yeah, trying to, yeah, yeah. i put that off for so long but i, I was lucky <laughs> i had a save after one mission and it went like almost a month without giving me anything to do and then two countries left the XCOM project like that <laughs> so i just reloaded Shit. that save and 
made a few more changes and just went straight to that mission. Okay, so you're not you're not following the no reloading rule that a lot of people seem to be. I have s- multiple saves inside a mission. <laughs> so that's a no. <laughs> I have a like you know how Ryan wanted to capture that disc. I have multiple saves on multiple missions of me trying to do that, but I don't right, think so, you actually can. Okay, that's what that was gonna be my next question: is is can you? But all right, well, shit. Okay. All right, like I said, we're going to move on past XCOM. Cause we well, maybe, or maybe I needed the, up, the upgraded arc thrower or whatever it is, but oh, I don't know. Don't, don't introduce more possibilities because then you'll just keep trying. So aside from XCOM, uh, I'm already blank. What did you say the other game was you played? NBA 2K13. NBA, okay. And you said before we recorded that you had some things you wanted to talk about with that one. Um, now, I'm, I'm not a sports guy, so I can't yeah. really say one way or the other. Third, do you play sports games? Nope. <laughs> so this will be a real short one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's, you need to get touchdowns in that game, right? Yeah, touchdowns and uh, extra points. Go, go the, goal, field, the field goal is really where you. I mean, that's, that's, it's, that's no. It's really about move. the tries. It's really you gotta about get the your tries. squadron to the you know the target zone, right? Yeah, but you want to avoid avoid getting a birdie because that's bad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Continue. All right. Um. At first, I had an issue with like the control change they made, where they put everything on the right stick, and the left trigger was just a modifier for when you shoot. And I didn't like that just because I was so used to the controls last year, where the right stick was shooting. And just yeah, I noticed used to that when they did the the quick look on Giant Bomb, they were really struggling with trying to even just make basic shots yeah, until that... they learned that just hitting X shoots and like that completely bypasses the whole change, right? Yeah. And that was it was the same last year. Like X has always been a shoot button if you don't want to use the shots if you didn't want to use the shot stick. Right, but I'm saying like the the, the new well, is, well, so the shot stick wasn't new for this year. No, they they just moved how you do all of the ISO moves, like the spins, the crossovers. Oh, okay. So they made that more of an, an analog movement. Right. Yeah. Rather than you button press. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then the other thing is they have their my player mode. Where it's like you, basically you make a player, you lead them through the NBA from a rookie until whenever you feel like retiring, mm. and they changed it in a way so that they made it more. I, I think they're trying to make it more persistent, so you'll have an account with this one character throughout the next couple of games, I guess. Hmm. So they've made it so that uh, you don't gain, you don't just gain points for that mode in that mode. You gain it through other modes. But because you could cheese it, they have it set up so that you have to be online at all times to gain experience for in other modes for the my player mode. And because of that, they disabled auto saving, and oh. disabling auto. Uh, sorry, they didn't disable auto saving. They disabled the ability to turn auto saving off. Mm-hmm. That alone almost made me return that game because that game, <laughs> that game auto saves like a motherfucker. Well, I was gonna say, and I imagine in a you know a career, that's a lot of time you're you're sinking into that. Any me- that dude, it, it, it auto saves almost any time you change something in a menu. Yeah, and so like any one thing goes away, you don't necessarily want it to go. You you yeah. want to be able to reload a save. Yeah, and they also took out a bunch of the cosmetic things you'd be able to do. Actually, most of the cosmetic things you're able to do with your player, and they hid them behind using those experience points in the my player store to buy like a knee pad. Or an elbow, as like an elbow sleeve. Uh, they so also microtransactions. <laughs> oh, and yeah, but I mean, you can use like in-game. Oh, that was in-game stuff. Okay, okay. But you can also buy it, and someone on the forum, I went to the official TK forums to see if you could say, "Well, auto saving." And I read something like someone spent forty dollars, and they just made their my player ninety-nine. Great. <laughs> so they were done, and also there's. There's ways to glitch that system in fun ways that you will. <laughs> it, uh, so, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say this on the podcast if for anyone who actually cares about this. If you want to if you want to glitch it, what you do is you play a, a really good game, and because you can save during games, you just save two seconds before the clock runs out, and it'll and every time you reload it because it's the, persistent like experience and stuff that you're gaining. Yeah, right. and it counts off at the end of the game. And if you're doing it in my player mode, each game after at the end of each game, you usually have a press conference. 
and it won't auto save until after you've gone through the press conference, but you'll have already gotten the experience, the, you know, the points. If you just keep <laughs> quitting out, you'll spend more time loading in and out than you will in the actual game. Oh, that is brilliant. Yep. <laughs> so, all right. So, since you clearly are are you know a, a basketball video game player, I, I want to ask you. Um, because they were, they were again, you know, referencing back to Giant Bomb. Um, surprise, surprise. Uh, they were talking about the cancellation of, of NBA Live 13. Um, and they, they felt like kind of, you know, next year is their, their one big chance to really have a chance to really come back again with the new consoles. Do you feel like maybe the missteps that were taken on, on, uh, 2K13 could go, you know, help give EA that footing to come back again or is it pretty much like does what they did here not really matter because you know there is no competition now and it's a whole new ball game excuse the pun uh with the next uh systems I mean they uh, the stuff I have an issue with is not a gameplay it's just like cosmetic things that they could easily like change or fix or not even have in next year and they'd still be a better like so gameplay game. wise it's still solid. Yeah. Okay. Like once you okay. get used I mean you can switch the controls back to last year's, but once you get used to the new controls, they're fine. It's just I mean, if you played a lot of the uh of two K eleven and ten and twelve, you'll be used to the old controls. So if like you'll be in a clutch situation or like a panic situation and you're trying to get a shot off real quick, you might not hit the left trigger to shoot. And you'll be kind of pissed, but other than that, you're fine. Once okay. you get used to them. All right, so one last question before we move on to what Thur's been playing. How much better does Jay-Z make that game? 50% better. I'll go 50%. <laughs> there you go. EA, EA has no chance. No chance. All right. It's because the only... They, they do an intro before each game in my player mode, so they do a song. Yeah, like that reminded me of like wrestler intros. Mm-hmm. It was fucking weird. Oh, what they've done the what they've done in the store uh, the my player mode is hilarious. Where they make you create a fake Twitter account in game, right. and people that's will what sh- I want to do. I don't, I, and and people will shit talk you over Twitter, <laughs> or like compliment you over Twitter. So one guy said, "Oh, we're playing." Like, oh, we're playing this guy. Oh, I'm going to have some rest in the fourth quarter. So I went and dropped 40 on his ass. <laughs> so, yeah, he did have rest in the fourth quarter because his team was being blown out. <laughs> I just, like... Uh, you e showed that guy. The, yeah. The, the Facebook and Twitter like integration in games, I feel like, is already, like... It's offensive in Madden. It, 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 yeah, and oh, that like is the a, case in a lot of them. But, like, in... It, no, when I say offensive, step- I mean the first two options after you beat a game are share on Facebook and share on Twitter. Great. Yeah. I mean, sure. So if you're not paying attention, you could accidentally do that. You know, I don't even use Facebook, really. I, like, I have an account, but I don't really ever update or anything. I, I'm so fed up. Like, anytime I actually do end up going on Facebook for whatever reason, like, usually to log into another website because it's easier that way. Um I just see the most, just the dumbest shit that people post on there. Like, I'm almost tempted just to say fuck it in any game that has Facebook integration. I'll just spam the hell out of those people. Just, you know, get them back for all those goddamn Farmville requests. <laughs> oh, Madden on one minute quarters. There you go. So I'm, I guess I'm picking up Madden this year. All right, third, what are you, what have you been playing? Not much. Pretty much just, uh, <laughs> Guild Wars 2. <laughs> uh, like I said last week, we, we finally did the new map for Minecraft, so I've been like putting out fires there and just all the people complaining. Um, but other than that, no, I've, I've been working mostly, thankfully, because games scare me this week. I, I'm, I'm waiting for... I, I wanted to get... I really wanted to get Dishonored, but I'm just like looking at the games to come. I don't think I can beat it in two weeks. You can beat it in two weeks. I could... You can... Yeah. If you had a solid Saturday, you could probably beat that game. Mm. Like it all. I mean, it all depends on on like how you approach things. Like I've heard of people beating it in. You know, it took me a long time six, to beat Deus Ex. It's like I, I would hours. I would play it as like can't kill anybody. Okay. Yeah. See, you're looking at probably <laughs> close to like 
20 or 30 hours in at that point. Just because that, that seems more challenging than just stabbing people. What's coming but out like, in the next two weeks that you want? Uh, yeah, Assassin's like Creed three, 3 hits at the end of the month. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 looking at, I'm looking at the PC version, so and I'm still it's, two more weeks out from that one. It's it's more so, like, well, I, I've heard even on the PC version, you still got to use a controller, so I'm like, well, screw it. I'll just use the Xbox. Yeah, but, but the higher resolution. Mm, that's true. And, and Ubisoft did finally get rid of their... Um, Persistent online internet connection DRM bullshit. They just, I'm, you know, I'm gave it to UK anyway. for MBA. well, yeah, but it's more so like for principle. Yeah, for for me personally, like that's one of the re- reasons. One one of the reasons why I'm going to get it on PC is kind of to support that decision because they should have always done that, and I, I would never buy Ubisoft games at launch because of that DRM. So like now that they've gotten rid of it, and the, the worst part about it, and one of the re- biggest reasons too, is not so much I guess to support that decision for them to get rid of it. But more so to prove a point, because when they got rid of it, they were still saying like that people were just going to steal their game anyway, and like their reasoning for getting rid of it was, well, you know, ninety eight percent of players on on the uh, PC will will steal the games and and you not not pay any money for it regardless of whether they, you know, it's a free to play game or a, f- a full purchase game or whatever, and so it sounded like. We'll go ahead and get rid of this because we, you know, clearly people don't like it, but it's not like it's going to make more people buy our game. So, that you you might have just swayed me with that. I might wait two weeks to get it then. <laughs> Plus, like I said, higher resolution, like it's going to look way better on PC, and okay. and you know, I imagine sixty frames. And nobody really, I mean, nobody other than from software locks PC games at thirty. So. I have a question. I've been, like I, the, the whole like higher frames and all that. I. Doesn't usually affect me. I can I can see a game with thirty and be fine. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely like that that one ethical stance is definitely important to like. It's weird control. because like I'm I'm saying like I'm gonna put it to you guys and give you my money. Yeah, see that's what I'm thinking. Do you think that was a shrewd business tactic? Oh, I mean, it could, totally could have been, but at the same time, it's either I you know continue to buy the console version anyway. Or buy the version I actually would prefer, which is the PC version, and in, in doing so, you mean the I'm, version they make more money off of. Yeah, but still, <laughs> but the, it's the version that you know I'm 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 more happy with because you know it does have the higher resolution. Um, so, you know it's it's going to look nicer. It's going to run at a higher frame rate. Um, I play most of my games on PC anyway, um, and on top of it, it proves to them like no, there are those of us who are willing to buy your games on PC and you know pay real money for it. Provided you get rid of your bullshit DRM. So, I mean, it's a win-win. Yeah. Um, there, there so if was, you wait two more weeks, then that gives you time for Dishonored. So I'll probably end up picking up Dishonored. Got a month. I did I try playing <laughs> Dust Force this week. And I just, like, I, I might have to try, like, can you play the, with a uh, controller? Because I tried the keyboard. And I, I, just, I would hope so, yeah. I mean... It's it's more so, like, I people are going to flame me for this, but I did beat Super Meat Boy with a keyboard. Oh, good lord. Like dark levels and everything, or just no. I just I I did the na- the, the standard story and was oh, done okay. with it. Uh, That's okay. still crazy. That is but, still yeah. crazy, but but it's just I was like gonna say, going, I would love like, to see somebody go through this on those dark levels with a keyboard. That's still like simple controls, so and then going does the into keyboard dust make force. it through that. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, the keyboard is fine. No, I mean someone trying to do those levels on the keyboard. Does that keyboard make it through it before they just chuck it? Like out rage wall? destroy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like I've no, thrown I'm, I'm a pretty... controller in Rage, and it wasn't because I was playing a, a super like hard platform. It's because I was playing Ninja Gaiden Two, and that game was just oh. fucked. Oh man, yeah. yeah. No, I'm pretty. You know, like, Dust Force is a little bit more floaty, isn't it, than like Super Meat Boy? Like it's not really as precision or precise jumps. It's more like that. They really need to have the screen closer in because it's more like you're you're comboing off the walls and everything. It's a lot more button intensive than mm. Super Meat Boy, and so like that, my brain wasn't accepting it. Yeah, Super Meat Boy is more timing intensive than anything. Yeah, like like Dust Force isn't really so much on that on that end. So yeah. I I tried it. I don't know if I can get that. I only paid a couple bucks for it, so I might just put that down and <laughs> get Dishonored now. So, so wait, do you, well do you done, have sir. A, do you have a controller for your PC? Yeah, I got one. Okay, okay. I was gonna say because like with Assassin's Creed, like I would still I I'm not gonna yeah. use a, a keyboard on that one. It's I re- I originally played the first one on uh, keyboard or on. Uh, Xbox and later got on the PC when it came out just because it was on sale. Oh man, my Assassin's Creed title, or like my. Okay, so I have one on the PC. Mm-hmm. I have two on the PS3. <laughs> I have Brotherhood on the 360. 
and then I ended up getting Revelations back on the PC. The PC. Oh, that's what you say. You got Revelations on the Wii somehow. <laughs> like, man, he's every all over. Yeah. So, you, like, yeah, like my, you, like that, that was why with with three, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna buy it on whatever system I want because it doesn't matter anymore. Like, I I have it on every system that's available, and actually, I'm actually gonna be buying three on PC and Wii U because my wife wants to play it as well, and. I'll be I'll be buying it through Steam, so that doesn't really work with sharing why, it. Why are you getting a Wii U? Uh, because the, Nintendo makes Mario. I'm still going to repeat the question: Why are you getting a Wii U? I'm, I'm still going to answer the same way because Nintendo <laughs> makes Mario. Like I'm getting a Wii U because I, I like even though I didn't play a ton of games on the Wii, I did. You know, I, I actually recently because I was you know I moved and I reset up my my game shelf and everything. Um, most of the games I bought were Nintendo games, but they were all great games. So, like, I'm going to play New Super Mario Bros. U, and I'm going to play, you know, whatever the new Zelda is going to be. I'm going to play whatever the new 3D Mario is going to be. Like, I I know I'm going to play those games, so why not just go ahead and get one? Not to mention Bayonetta 2. Um, yeah. And there was that, like, it wasn't casual. Zombie U looks really interesting. Too. Zombie U looks good. I've been hearing kind of mixed things, like mostly positive, but I've been hearing a couple of people say some negative things about it. But I think a lot of that was um, had to do with the E3 demo they did, which they've since apparently like like very heavily touched the game up in terms of the um, the graphics and everything. Like I guess it was looking real muddy back then. It seems uh, but, like, and this this might just be like a weird observer's uh, comparison, but it seems like a British single player version of um, what, what was that Arma mod that came out a while ago. Daisy, oh, uh, Daisy, Daisy, yeah, kind, kind yeah. Of, yeah, I, I can see, I can see the comparison. Like, the, the whole like there doesn't seem persistent to be death a, idea. Like a story? persistent death. Is there an ending to it? There, I believe there's an ending to it, and there is a story. Like okay. there's actually like a guiding character that gets in touch with you. I think pretty early on through like radio contact or whatever. Oh, uh, if it's um, if kind it's of guiding a, you along through the game. If it's linear, I don't know. But that's that's not what I've been playing. That's that's for the that's our, for a future podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. No, All right, so I'm going to buy a Wii U. Actually, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to buy a Wii U. I'm also really interested in the TV stuff they're doing too. Like that seems really really interesting. As somebody who has a two year old kid who loves watching Dora on the TV, like to be able to know that I can sit on my on, on the controller and play Zombie U or Mario or something, and he can still watch TV on there. Like that's actually really cool. Right on. Um, but how well, what I, how well is that going to work though? Uh, from I mean, supposedly it's completely lagless. Like it works great. Like we got to remember, most of the tech in that console is on that controller. It's not in the system. You mean the you mean the hundred dollar controller? You you mean the hundred and forty? Oh, yeah, hundred and forty dollar controller. Hundred and twenty dollars and forty. I think is where people are guessing it's going to be. The price I thought they should, or the price I think they should charge for that controller. Is a hundred dollars the price? I'm. I know they're going to charge is closer to one hundred and fifty. But at the same time, like you're only ever going to buy one, and that's going to be down the road because no games that launch for North America are going to support it. The, like the second one. Yeah. So, eh. I'm just happy I want to bet with my friend. I told him that controller <laughs> would be about, would be more than a hundred dollars, and he said there's no way they charge that much. Oh yeah, I mean you, you, you had to see the coming when you saw. I sold him. The, I sold him like the most. Most of the money in that console is not going into the hardware for the actual console. It's going into that controller. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, like I said, as soon as you saw the tablet, you knew that that was going to be an expensive controller. Um, I just, I, one game I really want to see on Wii, and it probably won't even go is Dungeon Land. But that's that's an indie game in development. So I was going to say I have no idea what Dungeon Land is. The only it, game I want to see. It's a on very Wii cartoony U. looking, so it's good for Wii. Um, you're, you're like three adventurers in a, a, a theme park run by an old dungeon master, which is like ideal for the controller, like the, the dungeon master kind of like a controller, mm. and just everything's trying to kill you. You know, actually, I could see that happening for the Wii U um, because I was uh, I was actually listening to the Eight Four Play podcast, the most recent one. I don't normally listen to them, but I ran out of bombcasts and I was really bored at work. <laughs> um, so I was listening to a lot to the about the quality podcast. of that show. <laughs> no, it actually was. It, it actually was a really a really good show. I just I don't care about like Japanese gaming as much. That's what they tend to focus on. Um, but they talked a bit about the the Wii U and about Nintendo and stuff. There was actually a lot of Nintendo news on there. Uh, but one thing they talked about was that apparently Nintendo has been actually like going to indie developers 
and kind of like trying to bring them on board on the Wii U. Um, so it, hopefully this means we'll see a lot more of, of those indie developers making unique games like that for the Wii U. I mean, we already, there's already some, I, there's, there was one they were talking about in particular and I forgot what it was called. Um, it was like something Aurora or something like that. Um, that's supposed to be like a launch title on their, uh, digital store day one. When you say launch, do you mean day launch day, day or, uh, okay, I was going to say, or yeah, like launch. One. No, their, not not their ambitious not launch between window. November and March. <laughs> <laughs> their ambitious ass launch window. Um, but anyway, moving forward, um, I'll just quickly touch on what I've been playing this week. Uh, I have played a little bit of Dishonored, like I said, probably about an hour and a half or so. That game is great. I would, from what I played of it, it is really good. I have a copy um, of that staring me in the face right now that I haven't I, even opened. All I've done is take I, the wrap off, wrapper off of it. I'm not the kind of person that typically plays stealth games very well because I'm not good at stealth, but the way that that game handles it, it's, it even in just like that early mission, it's pretty much all I've really played. I, I basically did the, the escape section and then kind of the first um, sequence basically leading up. I basically just got Blink. Uh. Um, so I'm really early in the game. Uh, but that first escape sequence, like I did that entire thing, I thought without killing anybody. It turns out you drop guys in water that counts them as, de- as dying. Um, <laughs> go figure <laughs> but so i killed three guys but i didn't so, actually like so we're back to kill anybody the so, assassin's creed wait throwing <laughs> conscious people in water kills them oh my god what have i done <laughs> well it's actually really interesting um apparently there there are other ways that you can end up actually inadvertently killing people so like if you end up like knocking a guy out in an area where there is a um kind of mass of rats because kind of the whole premise, story premise is like this: this plague is being spread by the rats. Yeah, it's not um, an actual like plague. It's the rats are coming and eating people. Yeah, like it's the rats like, kind what? of a plague or something. Yeah, oh, uh, but if you like, if crazy. you knock a dude out, you know, do a non-lethal takedown on a guy in an area where those those are around, they can actually come over and like eat the dude, and it counts as a kill. Nice. So if you're going through and trying to do like a ghost playthrough, you gotta be really careful, <laughs> like where you take guys down and like where you move them and stuff. And if you yeah. drop them from too far a height, like they, it will kill them. You can, you can drag bodies, right? Uh, you can pick oh, yeah, them up and, yeah. and, and walk yeah. them around, yeah. Just put them all in the same spot where rats won't get them. That was actually what I did uh, oh, in the very beginning sequence. I think I stacked up like five bodies on top of each other. And it was great because like, there's this guy in the jail cell. And like every time you bring a guy over and drop him down there, he has some kind of comment to say about that guy. Like, there was one guy I like, dropped him on there. He's like, oh, yeah, good thing you got him. He's spitting my food every day. Like this is great. Is there a achievement for like stacking up bodies like there was in Assassin's Creed? Uh, I don't know because, like I said, I've only really done that that as my main mission, and oh. there wasn't a whole lot of guys around real close to each other. It was kind of was one of my out. favorite missions was like get, uh, achievements was like getting five dead bodies into one haystack. <laughs> um, Just indiscriminately that, killing people as they walked by. I also uh, played the first couple of missions of XCOM. Uh, that game is. It's difficult, though, again, you know, they do kind of hold your hand a fair amount in the early parts, so, like, I haven't really had anybody die other than the ones that were meant to die, have you, but I have had a couple guys wounded already. Have you run into chrysalids? No. I've run, the, like, the, the newest enemy I've run into are uh, Thin Men. The thin Men are, are annoying. Chrysalids are evil. <laughs> evil. <laughs> the, thing that, the, the thing that's, like, really, like, you have to be so fucking careful about with that game is, like, positioning of your guys, not only, you know... In, in relation to any enemies you can see. But if you move a guy to where behind, he's behind cover for any maybe enemies in front of you, and, and then you move almost... another guy and he suddenly uncovers more enemies, those enemies could be in an area where they're just totally flanking that guy and they get free shots on him. <laughs> so you, you got to be so careful like where you place guys. And like more specifically, once you have a guy in place, where you move the rest of your guys to make sure that you don't make um, that first guy kind of vulnerable to any new enemies. Ugh. So I've had, rough. I've had to reload I'm, so many saves because I put somebody in the wrong spot and they <laughs> revealed see, I, I'm gonna six enemies. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try really hard not I'm to reload I'm saying right now. Saves. Have fun attacking that base without reloading. I'm going to try it. I'll, I'll, I'll I let you know how it room, goes. But <laughs> there were six chrysalids and two thin men. Uh, oh, I just thought of a crazy game concept for like those types, like the XCOM, XCOM where you're constantly saving. It is like between normal and hard, there's just like you, you get... Whenever you successfully beat a mission, you get a certain number of saves you can use. <laughs> so something kind of that that would actually be between hard and uh, Iron Man then. Well, yeah, the Iron Man playthrough is just straight up one save. That's all you get. 
but just yeah, like putting a whole new like tactical level of like, uh, uh, do I want to use so one of talking, my saves? Or, you're not talking number of save slots, but you're talking about just number of saves, like, n- like number of like, times you can load in that mission before it's just a fa- yeah. Okay, it gets marked as a failure or something. And you... Oh, that'd be rough. Uh-huh. That'd be real rough. No, no. <laughs> so <laughs> the other game that I've been playing a, a bit about. Um, Last week on the podcast, uh, for anybody who listened, I, I uh, admitted that I did go out and buy the expansion for World of Warcraft, and so I, much for that blood pact you had. <laughs> you so the work. worst part—the worst part about it was like I got it, and then I realized that this was like weeks from the end of my annual pass. Like, my <laughs> annual pass ends in like two weeks. But I've got, I, like I justified it to myself because I was like, you know, I'll go ahead and spend the money on the expansion now and kind of get in there, see what it's all about, and know now whether or not I actually want to even, like, continue down that road, or if I just want to go ahead and tap out at, at, at the 21st. Because, I, I like, I'd rather do it this way than to have, you know, that, that time pass, and then be like, I want to go back and check out World of Warcraft again, you know, check out this expansion, and then go and spend, you know, the $40 I'm buying it, and then spend the extra money for the sub pass when I necessarily need to. So I'm kind of getting out of the way now. I've been playing a monk, and the class I know is interesting, and there's some cool things that they do with it, because I played some in the beta at a higher level, but with the changes they made to um, to kind of how they dole out abilities and, and the way they, they've changed the talent system around, the first 20 levels of a monk are fucking boring. Like, I was level 20, and I had, like, three abilities. Like, I had yeah, three offensive abilities, and that was it. And actually, like, I am I think I'm 26 now. I have three offensive abilities. I have a heal that also does damage. And then I have a one-hit kill that kills anything that is at or below my max health on a one-minute cooldown. And everything else is just, like, utility stuff. See, to, like, Guild Wars players who would be, I assume, re- listen to this, that sounds like, you know, that would be, like, one through ten sort of thing. But for anybody who hasn't played WoW, you, like, what, I think 90-some-odd abilities by level 70? Yeah, like, you have, like, by level by level 10, you have almost a full bar. Like, you almost yep. have 1 through 10 by that point, usually. Uh, but because this is, like, the first class that's, like, built around this new system of theirs, they're they're kind of spreading out the um, the abilities. There aren't nearly as many abilities as there are for other classes. So it's it's nice in that respect at max level because you don't have the, you know, 70 or 90 abilities or something to deal with. But at the same time, like, while you're leveling, it's just, you're, you're just kind of doing the same old shit. Like, it just, the, the gameplay never really changes up. I, I guess, may, and maybe that's just me being spoiled by Guild Wars 2, because if I want to change things up, I just change weapons, and now I have a whole new set of abilities. Yeah. And a whole new play yeah. style. Like, WoW doesn't really offer that. So, I, I mean, I'm going to keep, keep going with it and, and try to get to the higher levels and... and see you know how that works out i'm starting to hit the point now where i'm starting to get abilities so we'll see but so that's what i've been spending a little bit more time with i unfortunately haven't been spending really any time with guild wars 2 but that will hopefully change this weekend because it's supposed to rain like crazy tomorrow so i'm gonna go nowhere and just play games Woo-hoo. yeah before after Fucking we do finally the, before after we do all of that transfer shit tomorrow yes uh probably before during and after yes <laughs> the fun that's gonna be. Do we just want to segue to that? <laughs> um, sure. So, Derb, I think I'll let you take that one since you've kind of taken the reins. I think on on that whole thing. Well, okay. It's 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 a little bit of a topic, but we'll like we'll get to that and then just move on to updates and everything. But okay. um, basically, for the, the, I'd say there's about like fifty to like you know, like maybe a hundred people who are just like. Man, I, I was first time playing this MMO, and I would love to play with you guys. Can I get an invite? No. Uh, we can now start. Well, by the time you listen to this, we can now start inviting again. There's, I want to say, like 100 some odd spots we're gonna be booting of just people who, for the past two weeks, they haven't been on. We've been spamming in chat. Hey, we're like you know, or they transferred to other servers because I've yeah. seen people who have been on who are just tra- uh, on other servers. And it's we're we're, we're yeah. happy to have those I'm people in the know. like giant bomb community, but they should be in How I Met Your Mesmer. Like Lincoln Force is giant bomb people who are on and active on Yaxbend. 
And yeah, so- and I mean, it's not like we're you know we're we're running with a a, a small you know guild cap. I mean, we got we got five hundred guild members, and we're full. And there's there are quite a few that are inactive for whatever reason. And and like you said, it's not like we're kicking them out of the community and saying, "Sorry, you know, too bad you can't you can't play with us anymore." Ha ha ha. It's it's more just wanting to keep to keep the active players playing together and not have those active people sitting in a guild where there's like maybe three of them. And if you are a person who is active in Guild Wars and just you feel committed to another guild, uh, check on the forums. Uh, we have a post saying to like join our Steam group. Uh, check that out because if we ever start doing events and you want to be a part of that but still want to be part of your guild, join that and that will start like popping in, hey, we're doing this on this day. Yeah, uh, and I was actually really pleased to see um, from the... Uh, the form that Syndicate put out for for everyone to fill out for um, all that information, and one of those was like you know whether you join the Steam group. It was actually really cool to see that probably like ninety percent of people that filled that out joined the Steam group. Yeah, like, it's going to make like going forward that's going to make guild events a lot easier to manage. At least until ArenaNet will start implementing things like guild calendars and events. Yeah, the yeah, guild message that pops up when you log in. But uh, they have started implementing some things. Do we want to? Talk about that. Yeah. Um, so let's go into. We'll probably start with the uh, the patch notes. And these are these are at this point probably a little bit old, but they did come out like right after we recorded last last week. Um, so they would be the patch notes for um, October seventh. And there's a whole slew of patch notes in there. Um, have you guys got a chance to really look through these much? I imagine by now you're probably pretty familiar with them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A bit. So again, like I've kind of been. Uh, away from the game more than I would have liked. So, like, it, what, what were kind of the big standout changes they made in this patch? Pistol Whip. P- yeah, Pistol Whip. And oh, they did, finally, they did finally update Pistol Whip? 15% Pretty much less it. damage. A lot of the things we talked about two podcasts ago with the whole, like, PvP and, and balancing um, is, like, they, they've been making some slight changes to see if that helps balance the field some. Um, Pistol Whip got uh, damage reduction, and as uh, Cynic was saying, Mesmer's just being able to attack eight guys at once with our phantasms. Uh, we have longer uh, casting times on a lot of those, so hmm. should hopefully balance some things out. They made a few other changes. Uh, Guardians, Riven, you want to talk about that? They're trying to change retaliation, so it's not something you can basically keep up at all times. To something that you just use as a counter if someone's getting ready to like burst you, hmm. or not? Bur- well, not burst you so much. Getting ready to do a, a ton of damage. And they also changed the order of the skills in the hot bar, which is annoying, just because of muscle memory. <laughs> uh, so, were there any like non-class related changes that were pretty significant, or was it pretty much just like mostly balanced things? Uh, they uh-huh. fixed some Mystic Forge recipes that weren't working right. They've also done. Uh, I th- assume they've done some stamping down on the uh, exploding in. Dungeons. It looks like they close map exploits instead of flame, which I can guess there's one of them where you just skip a whole boss event. Um, I think it. I think it was the path that everyone was speed running before they put the limit on there. You could just skip a boss. <laughs> which I mean, it's uh, silly. So it's like I, I joined these pugs and like we would spend 20 minutes doing just like avoiding fighting and like guys, we could do this fighting in 15. Why are we doing this? Because it's it's faster. Because you no, can, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah totally. It's, people feel like they need to abuse things when they can. And I mean, yeah, I, just, exactly. because, I mean, there were other du- there were other dungeons where you could avoid entire mobs. In, I mean, what was it? Caught a kiss's manner. Not Caught manner. No, no, that's <laughs> that's acceptable. I mean, like a raw, you could get through the first two bosses in a total of five kills, and two of those would be the first two bosses. Yeah. So you mentioned Cognitive's Manor, and I noticed they, they closed map, map exploits there, but they haven't addressed... What, like, weren't there some pretty significant balance issues in those in some of those fights? I th- it's R- Riven, Riven has trouble talking about him because it brings up such, like, nightmares. He just, like... <laughs> like, it's, it's just... It's weird that, like, that still hasn't been addressed, though, right? Like, it, that's that's not just a Riven problem. That's, that's kind of widespread. There's an issue on every one of those paths. In- it's he's referring to I think he's referring to a giant room in which there's like three very close groups of veterans, and like there, there's like for each group there's maybe one non elite, like there's there's all elite, and so you pull one and then like the other two just auto aggro as well. 
and Jeez. death is all that happens from there. <laughs> um, and, and so, uh, like, his strategy is to just run past them all. <laughs> it works. So, so do you think that's, like, intended? Or do you think they just, like, they'd rather stamp out the, the bug stuff first before they start touching know. balance? I don't know. I think they'd probably rather get rid of the bug stuff. Because I think everyone who runs that dungeon knows you can just run past those things as far as that. Well, everyone I run that dungeon with knows we're just going to run past these enemies. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that path, oh, yeah, sorry, that mob is only there for two of the three paths, and the other one has a far, far worse thing. <laughs> where it's, it's a wall It's a wall you have to destroy, or a gate that you have to blow up with five powder kegs. So you, you have to run the powder kegs over there, put them in the door in specific spots, while fighting off enemies who can not only attack you and kill you, but they can take the powder kegs and move them back. <laughs> that sounds like an uphill battle if I've ever heard of one. Yeah. Yep. 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 No kidding. Um, All right, and then, so... And then lastly, another update they did was uh, they, they, they've been trying to stamp down the hackers and whatnot in the world versus world with the orbs of power. You say trying, so I'm guessing... Well, it's, they, they, they've, they've stopped one of the ways where Mesmer's uh, could, like, blink through walls, grab mm. the orb, and then just portal out. Okay, okay. They still haven't fixed the flying. That's still happening. Apparently there was a glitch where you could make multiple orbs of power by just having the person who had the orb disconnect. I swear I read that in one of the patch notes. Oh, Gates of Madness has seven <laughs> orbs. How'd they do that? <laughs> that? No wonder we can't kill them. <laughs> they have, what would that be? 300,000 health? 350 to each stat? Oh, good lord. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Okay, so so that pretty much it then for, I mean, it was, like I said, there's there's quite a bit of patch notes here, uh, but it, it looks like a lot of it was mostly bug fixing. Yeah. Again, which it's kind of been their MO since launch, or really since the first big patch, just kind of like fixing all these bugs and everything before they really get into it, the it, heavy it, balancing. It seems like a lot of the bugs are they're they're finishing those up and they're beginning to start implementing things to make the game fun again. Wait, this game was fun. Well, so, back in the beta, it was. <laughs> when they get rid no, of back the, in the beta, it was a blast. You're right. You're right. When they get rid of the bots, this game will be so much more fun. Oh. Okay. You, oh, you have actually. Seen the what I would story. argue is when they implement some of these upcoming structured PvP changes, this game will be a lot better. I haven't been to structured PvP in a while. I should, but implementing during, new things, during, structured PvP. Do tell. During amazing segways. Dot com. Hilarious. <laughs> I haven't seen the bots. You're right. I, I, it's just I it's just a it's, train of usually like guardians, warriors, and for the most part, rangers. It is funny to see. So it's like multi boxing bots. Uh, they're just they're just running a path, like running a path, killing enemies as they spawn in front of them. Yeah, in in W Dub or no, in like high level areas, some, like some low level oh, areas. In PB, I've, okay, wow. I've seen one or two, but like I've also seen like I've been in Frost Gorge Sound. There are spots where there's forty of them, fifty people stacked up, and like I click one of them, and it's like level twenty. <laughs> and I'm like, how did you? What, it, hats off to that botter. I don't know how they got that person there. <laughs> The best part is when you just go there and you see it's like, wow, that's a that's a lot of bears. <laughs> oh, I found the bot location. There's 40 bots. Oh Jesus. Oh man. All right. So new things coming out. See them. New things coming out. They they uh, Jonathan Sharp released a I guess a blog post um, talking about kind of the future of structured PvP in Guild Wars 2. Um, and while they weren't willing to talk about everything that they plan to implement in the future. Um, what they did talk about is what they feel. Basically, they they kind of you know they have this this same idea that a lot of MMO developers have kind of adopted from companies like Blizzard, um, where you know it's done when it's done, and in their case, you know they'll show it when it's ready. Um, so what they have talked about here is pretty much what they feel like is ready to be talked about. It's likely you know not too far off from being implemented in the game. Yeah, they're um, still they're, they're they're still even given dates. They're just saying near yeah. future. Yeah, like this is coming in the future, and th but this is what we're willing to talk about right now because this is mm -hmm. what we have ready. But there's some other things that are coming down the road. Uh, the first of those was uh, free automated tournaments. Um, so it looks like with those, like what, what what is the difference between the free automated tournaments and um, the the current like free I tournaments? Th I think they are the current tournaments. 
Okay, so they're just changing the reward system then. I think they're. I think they're just. They're outlining that and then showing what you get for the pay okay. tournaments. So they're outlining, outlining that to then show. Okay, this is what you do now. So then, okay, I guess what well, the first thing they're going to implement then is going to be the pay tournaments. And we've yeah. kind of known about pay tournaments since the beta. Yeah. Um, and and basically, what those are is those are what you're going to use your tournament tournament tickets for that you can get through either buying them with gems. Um, you can get them as re- from reward chests. From the free tournaments, um, and you also receive them when you rank up. Mm-hmm. Um, and you use those tickets to get in there into the paid tournaments. Um, and in those paid tournaments, that is where your fully custom teams are. So there's no, there's not going to be any solo queuing in paid tournaments. That's going to be for um, you know the the pre-made five versus five teams um, to go in. And I believe the map rotation is going to be the same as the free tournaments are. Which is really unfortunate. I feel like they. I feel like map rotation should be random. You shouldn't have to play the same map every time for round one. But Durin, what if I am in a PvP group where we want to practice a certain map and not have to go through the other tournaments? Well, if that's the case, they have a solution for you. What is that? That solution would be custom arenas. Uh, Arena Net. They. They. You know. This again. This is something we've known about for a little bit. Um, but they. You know. Finally, willing to talk about it. And that is that you are going to be able to rent uh, a custom arena. Um, and it seems like that's going to be something rented on, on a, a player basis. So I imagine if you're renting it for your guild, probably like the guild master or somebody will be the one in control of that. Um, and, and they can basically set it to be, you know, completely open, password protected. You can change map rotations. Um, there, there's going to be a whole slew of um, customizable options um, that you can set for your custom arenas. Um, even going so far as, like, it sounds like even being able to, like, like run in there by yourself, patch protect it. You can have your own personal custom arena if you really wanted to pay for it. Um, the one thing they're not talking about for it is how you're going to pay for it. Uh, they said that in future blog posts, they're going to talk about custom arenas in a lot more detail, um, discuss the um, settings available on them in more detail than, than kind of the basics they showed here, as well as how you'll rent them. What do you guys think? I think we talked about this, I believe it was last week, um, about how we think that they're probably going to going to have players pay for this. Some people were talking about karma as a means of it. I don't think that's going to be the case. I really think it's going to be gem. I would say gems, but then they have put maybe a, they have put a limit on the amount of karma you can get per day. So I they guess they raise it though. They, they, they raise it with yeah, because yeah, people would like spend like an hour and or and hit the limit. And do you just, think maybe they would do like a, a maybe a guild influence? I would say it it maybe influence because. Like, like extremely you said, would, heavy it, cost of influence or something? It would be one person. So if like they, everyone just keeps sending these whatever this fund is to an officer to be the one to buy it, you can't send karma. So I don't think karma is going to be yeah. it. And, it could, well, and, and, and because it's a single, you know, it is something rented by a single person from the sounds of how they described it, like that would be how it, how it would have to work. So it would either be, you know, sending the, you know, gold or gems or what have you to a person. You, so like you said, karma would work in that case. Can you send gems to someone? No, but you um, can mail them money, which they can then turn into gems. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so that could be the, the way they could get around that for gems. Like you know, there's going to be a gems option. Like they have to try, try to monetize this as much as they can, and it makes sense for them to do it. I mean, they're talking about renting servers. There's going to be a monetization of it. To um, be honest, I, I think gems would be okay because yeah, yeah. you can buy. I, I, we still haven't seen a lot of new things for the gem store. Um, you haven't seen the new dies you can speaking buy. Speaking of of new gems for the Two? gem store. Do we want to go ahead and segue then into the next? Uh, <laughs> sure. Next article. Sure. Completely unintentional um, that time. <laughs> <laughs> completely unintentional. Uh, but there may be some new items coming. Uh, there was a, a post on Guild Wars 2 Guru um, where they, they discovered some new items in the database. Uh, so those items are a permanent bank access contract, a permanent Black Lion merchant contract, a permanent um, trading post pickup contract, and then uh, the rest of these are really interesting, at least to me personally. Yeah. A uh, self-style hair kit, total makeover kit, random makeover potion, random hair tonic, and a name change contract. Which, like, the the uh, permanent things we've heard about before, uh, but they were mainly just, like, it's when they started talking about people wanting to get into the black line chests again. Um, those, like, because they would, like, rarely show up there. But mm. the self-style hair kit, like those things, are 
like newer uh, for me at least. And yeah, and, and and we should probably point out like when we we say like new things on the gem store, we're assuming these are going to be gem purchasable items. Yeah, uh, I mean, most likely they will be, but the, nothing is for certain is. yet. These are just items that were discovered. Yeah. I would say the kits are gem store. Uh, mm-hmm. The the I would permanent s- things. Go ahead. I would say you could probably get all of them out of a black lion chest. Mm-hmm. But maybe not all of them can be sold on the Akinas, like a few of the other things from the Trading Post can. Trading Post. Yeah, I, I would say probably all of the permanent things, like so those those permanent contracts as well as the name change contract, I don't think those are going to be sellable. I think those yeah. are just going to be yeah. straight up like bound when you pick it up. And um, the, the Trading Post currently offers like the temporary ones of those, right? Uh, uh, and you can, what you mean, the, you mean the company? The shop? The gym shop? The, yeah, I'm sorry, the gem shop, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I believe it has, it has temporaries of all of those, with, you know, obviously the exception of the name change. Um, a temporary name change would I be don't great. Know, like, <laughs> uh, do you think... <laughs> uh, do, do you think that they would have, like, a name change contract show up in a Black Lion chest, though? I mean, it would. I would make it, like, one of the smallest chances. I, w- I would not be I would surprised think that would be the one item that there, wouldn't. But that seems something more for the gem store. Yeah, like that seems like more more along the lines of like this is only this this is a service offered through the gym store. The only reason I can see it maybe being an in game item is because they are calling it a contract, same as the other permanent items. Yeah, um, we've but, seen kits before in the gym store, and the contracts seem to be from the uh, black or the, the chests. I was just okay. I was just assuming that the kits and the potion and the tonic would come out of the chest, just because everything else that says kit and potion and tonic can come out of the chest. Not, not well, that, and that, and that makes random. sense too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the random ones. Yeah, I mean those. I, I definitely can see those coming out of the chest as well. And, and, and clearly, like I said, all of this stuff is going to be on the gym store. I I would be very surprised if any of this was not available on the gym store for purchase. What do you think um, they? Because the store think, needs some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what do they mean by random though? Do you mean like you get the change? Uh, the random, random makeover thing? potion. No, the random makeover potion randomly changes all appearance settings. Height, body type, skin color, markings, face, and hair. Oh. Uh, you remain the same race and profession, and the item is destroyed when you finish using it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, same with the hair tonic. The hair tonic will ch- randomly pick a hairstyle uh, and color. Oh, and I, hope, I hope it's That's like ex- a temporary like five-minute thing, but oh, it could be not permanent. of your race. Oh. I hope it's permanent. It. I hope it's permanent. <laughs> I hope it's, it's probably permanent. Cause the, cause the oh no, it's, it's definitely got to be permanent. The I mean, fucker this is, who does that by accident. This is oh. basically, you know, this game's character custom or um, character recustomization is going to be done through this stuff, and, and, and I think that's that's a cool way to do it. Like making it a gem store item is obvious. Like I said, they need more things in that store, and they need more ways to monetize the game. Um, but you know, making those as items that you can also get in the game as well kind of goes along with what arena that's been doing from the beginning like it seems like there's very little that is gym store only in this game and that's really cool yeah. all right so with, moving along yeah without that, any segue do we just want to go to the the next topic which is really to go to but the mobile authenticator yeah we'll we'll touch on the mobile authenticator uh it's you know people's accounts have been getting stolen since day one so it's definitely I, something people have been wanting Actually, right. something that's neat with me is, well, myself, and we've actually seen a few posts on the Giant Bomb forums, like Zumi Ramen, I don't use my password for anything else. I have it written down, and yet somehow it was, like, they, they didn't get through, but somebody in China tried, like, accessing it. Hmm. And so it's like, th- th- there seems to be, like, they're trying, the, the evil hackers that are, are trying to get uh, our accounts are now trying the brute force method, whereas before yeah. they were just looking through forums. And so it seems like now uh, Arena's trying to roll out a uh, more permanent way to ensure that no one gets your account, like yeah. a mobile authenticator. And it's 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 cool too because you know it unlike so well for Blizzard, yeah, it, it worked well for Blizzard for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, it, and don't get me wrong, like the mobile authenticator actually has worked pretty much all the time until they had the hack on the server that that was when it kind of came out that they were fucking retarded and had their mobile authenticator um, information, granted it was encrypted, but still had that information on the same servers that your account password information was on. So that's an issue. Slight breach of security. A little bit. Um, they, they must but, have gotten their information from play, from Sony and PlayStation <laughs> on how to, how to keep secure. But ArenaNet shouldn't have such a problem because they are actually, instead of using their own 
um, mobile authenticator running through their own systems, through their own servers, um, they're using the um, Google Authenticator for iPhones and Android and the Windows Authenticator for the five of you that have Windows phones. <laughs> um, and they've hey, outlined... No, there's more than five people have a Windows phone. You're more right. My five... wife has one too, so that's six. six. No, there's more, six than five, there's more than five Microsoft employees. <laughs> they probably yeah, most of them have Windows. iPhones. Yeah, but oh. they don't use them. They don't have anything on there. There's it's a paperweight. Uh, yeah, so they, that, they have a nice. they have a, yeah they on on the forums. If you look in the news and announcement section, um, it's currently in beta, um, but it's it's available for anybody with an iPhone, uh, Android phone, or uh, you know Windows phone. Um, and they give you the instructions um, step by step on there how to set it up. It's real, real simple. Um, except I couldn't get my QR code to work, so I had to manually type it in. The one time I've ever tried to use a QR code. Those things are fucking worthless. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, like you said, like they, they account theft has been a real big problem and it's been something people have been wanting them to address for a while. And it sounded like this was going to be a part of their, um, whatever their app was going to be. And then that, that kind of fell through. And then they were talking about just releasing the API. And so everyone was like, well, what about an authenticator? You know, we kind of still need that. So it's good they're getting it out there. Maybe a little late. They should have had it ready for launch, um, as they have since learned. But you know, like I said, like you said, it's it's good that it's out there. Um, I don't. Know, I mean, there's not really much more to say. Well, I, mean, I guess uh, as a pro tip to anybody um, listening who doesn't know, who like isn't aware of like a good password protection or anything, get as many characters as you can. And if it's something you're not sure you're going to remember, write it down because. If you really think, like, if you keep a piece of paper like I do next to your computer, the odds that if someone's going to break in and start stealing my stuff, they aren't going to see the piece of paper and steal my Guild Wars 2 account. And it's and it's very important to note there, to, to make that distinction, write it down on a piece of paper and put it next to your computer. Don't save it as a notepad file labeled yeah. Guild Wars 2 password on your desktop. <laughs> that Don't do that. Keep Keep it analog. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and move on past that one uh, and hit our last news topic here, uh, which is was actually a almost breaking news. I, I think it was uh, this was uh, it, it is, it is the most ago. exciting update I think that we have. Yeah, so this is uh, the announcement of the uh, Shadow of the Mad King. Woo! So I think I'll let you take this third because I think you seem to be a lot more familiar with what this means. Other than awesome Halloween events, which I'm totally all for, but that is what I'm all for. It's it's well, it's the the, the, sh- the Mad King was something from Guild Wars One, which I didn't play during the Halloween time. I just I, I research all sorts of stuff because I have no life. But <laughs> they're they're just adding a lot of things, uh, doing a lot of changing to the maps. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing, and then uh, adding new outfits for the Black Lion Trading Company. To be selling. Oh, nice. So, like the costumes and stuff, basically. Yeah. Now, is that stuff going to be like temporary just for this event, or is it going to, um, like in, in terms of like availability on the, the store? That I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't temporary. I'd like to think it's permanent. Um, well, I mean, it, like, I imagine the items themselves will be permanent, but do you think that the items existence on the the Black oh Lion yeah trading they, they will only release uh okay. release the items on a tent like and while this update's like happening in halloween okay. yeah yeah i was gonna just have the halloween okay. costumes for halloween so yeah it looks like uh the, aside from you know the halloween festivities um the things we can expect to see are that they are gonna this is gonna be the update where they include the uh paid tournaments um and then they are also going to have new events jumping puzzles bosses Mini dungeons and achievements appearing across the maps. Which, actually, it, this is a very important one for me because, well, I enjoy the jumping puzzles, but I don't think they're going to release any new zones. I think they're just going to, like, th- there's still lots of areas on the maps that are hidden. Mm-hmm. That, like, I, I've scoured left and right. And, like, a, a good example is Metrica Province. I've yet to find anything there. And yet there's these huge areas, like, they could, something could be hidden back there. And I think they're just, they've made these jumping puzzles and they'll just, like, we'll get this massive patch. And it's like, why is this such a large file? It's because it's a whole new zone. That's just Metrica Province version 2. Hmm. I mean, when I was that, doing world completion, I found a bunch of areas like that as well. 
I just I mean, assumed I assumed they'd be for expansion. Like when I think it's Machika Province. I mean, you could go to the wall where the Tengu are. Yeah, it's it. it this seems like it, it's a good use of arena resources rather than trying to make a whole new zone. They already have a zone that's like from a developer standpoint, like eighty percent full. And so they can just keep adding more stuff there with the light team and not have to use more resources designing a whole new map. Yeah. At least well, not, not yeah, not every update. I was, I was gonna say, like how far along or how far out do you think we are from them actually releasing a new zone? Like this is they they are they are, you know, calling this the first major game release for Guild Wars two. Yeah. Um and with this release they're not including uh, you know new zones they're maybe including add-ons to zones um, well, so when do you think we could, should expect to see you know an actual proper new map has uh like i believe you're a guild wars one vet right duran no i'm not actually i i played all of about four hours of it with cynic uh, a couple weeks before launch to get all, to get all that stuff? to get all that stuff no no mostly just to see where they were coming from with the game see between now and the t- last time i was on this podcast i have since gone and bought guild wars one Oh man, you poor, poor soul. I want to get the really FPS like, and then just stop. It's, it's more so. I after playing Guild Wars two, I cannot see how anyone can go back and play that game. Uh, it's a it's a game I have running in the background during most of my classes, and it's just my pet and this little thing that they gave me for buying the game, killing <laughs> things while I'm not paying attention. <laughs> you, you can get your heroes to help out too on some missions. <laughs> I just, like, the, the best way I can say to play Guild Wars 1 after playing Guild Wars 2 is take the spacebar key off your keyboard. Yeah. Well, no, because you still need it. No, you can use the mouse. Just right-click. Oh, that's true. Okay. Uh, spacebar is easier, though. <laughs> yeah, but I keep wanting to jump. <laughs> I like so jump. Especially when you hit the edges and, like, it's about a, a four-foot drop. Yeah. yeah. And you, and you like, I can walk drop down off there. Like, no, I got to walk all the way around this ledge because uh, invisible God. walls everywhere. Yeah. But um, I I am like I'd I'd like to think we'll see more maps, uh, more zones and whatnot with like later patches. But I'm not sure it's gonna be a regular thing. Uh, the reason why I asked if you were a vet was I wasn't sure how often they added new maps back then. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, all of our vets are not on the show today. <laughs> so it's it's a wonderful topic for next time. There you go. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> but the, but like this, I would I would say um with. In regards to adding, you know, new new content like that to the game, I would be very surprised if we went past March thirty first, twenty thirteen, and did not have another major content update with, you know, new proper zones and mm-hmm. you know maybe a dungeon or two in there, um, because I, I imagine, you know, with that being the end of of quarter four, twenty twelve, they're gonna try and you know get that last little boost in, and get some, get more people in here, get more cash influx as much as they can before that quarter ends. So I think it makes a lot of sense for them to release something before that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to guess probably like a January, maybe like early February release of, of the next major content. A Valentine's a Day update then includes a new dungeon. That there you involves, go. They'll just release oh, every time there's a holiday. No, no, no. Major that update. involves <laughs> the love story between Logan and Queen Jenna. And I will, yeah, I I will take a break from the game. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me, like the, the the dungeon is going to be like Logan has become corrupted by somebody, and we have to kill him before he does something evil. You I don't care. This... I just want to kill Logan. No, it'll be like it'll be just like a rip off of Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> and they'll just both die at the end. Yeah, which I'm totally okay with too. Except that they leading up to that? the death, well, leading up to the death of them, you still have to deal with Logan the whole way. So there's that. Mm. My favorite dungeon to run so far is still in Twilight Arbor story, just because you get to kill Logan, if only an illusion. <laughs> I, w- I, w- I should get some alcohol one day, and I should do the Twilight Arbor drinking game. Wait, Every time they say, dear heart, take a swig. Oh, God. <laughs> How, uh, I'm not that, I'm not that I, much I, of a heavyweight. I don't think I'd make it that long. I, I was going to say, all I know is I can never do that before a podcast, because... <laughs> We saw how that how that worked out last time. That was oh, great. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. That was, <laughs> that was great. Gold. It was, but yeah, that uh, th- this this big patch with uh, new mini dungeons and whatnot is due for the 22nd, so middle of this month. Yep, not too far off at all. Uh, just a couple weeks. Uh, oh, actually, God. exactly ten days from the time of this recording. I, oh Just, God, that's exam week for me. Great, Scott. I haven't even hit level 80 yet. God, I'm slacking. 
There are some people uh, okay. in the guild who have like two and almost three level 80s. You are sniping. Oh, good God. Uh, all right, I gotta get on it. All right, so um, this is kind of, like I said before, when we first uh, started the show, this is kind of a, a short show, um, so we'll go ahead and end it there. Um, so, plugs. Revan, any plugs? Nope. All right. Thurbleton, any plugs? Um, just with, uh, we, we do three days of World vs. World. The big one right now has been every Friday with the rollover. Uh, we also do a lot of people show up on Saturday. We're trying to get a solid group to have some fun on Wednesdays, Love Love Wednesdays. Um, it's, it's just like it, we, we just been having bad luck with what borderlands we end up going to, but keep showing up for that. People who got busy weekends and I think we're trying to do tournament Tuesdays. Is that a reality yet? Um, I'm sure, I'm sure it we, will be reality come custom arena time. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say that would, that will definitely be a reality. Uh, I want to make sure that we start getting some structured stuff going soon. Um, cause that's definitely, you know, in, in, in my wheelhouse, that's where I'll probably be spending the majority of my level 80 time. Yeah, we, um, we we can do just like everyone do troll builds, and we'll all be in like a, our own uh, giant bomb versus giant but the bomb f- server or something. The fun of the bait is was when random people would come into the servers, and you would just use them as bait to kill people. <laughs> uh, see that, and that, and that is exactly exactly why these these um, guild structured PvP events have to happen because like. Random, like random queuing structured PvP is just not fun. No, yeah. like in, in no way is it fun at all. So I, I definitely want to make sure we get that stuff going real soon. Um, if not this coming week, then we will definitely do something the following week. So yeah, we uh, we, we are in the works. People who are are listening, we are in the works for doing these events. Um, join the Steam group. By the time of this podcast, if you're not in Lincoln Force, talk to one of the officers. Uh, we will, we will get you guys in here and we'll, we'll start doing fun things. Yep. All right. And uh, I, you know, I, that's the show. Cynic, have fun editing um, because <laughs> I'm not doing it. And uh, we will see you guys all next week, hopefully with Cynic and New back this time. Um, we were supposed to have Suki on for this episode, so we'll see if we can maybe get him on next week. I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. We, we record pretty late his time. Yeah, uh, he's man, getting close so- to, to school time, and it's like 4 a.m. when he records. <laughs> man, who cares about ah, sleep? That's all right. So he never sleeps anyway. That's okay. I'm, I'm going to say I want the person who's operating on me to be well rested. <laughs> no, you want Just him hopped up on ca- you want that fucker hopped up on caffeine. Just <laughs> switching when he's when he's got that scalpel inside you. One one hand with the scalpel, the other hand still playing the game and tournaments and talking on, on mumble. There you go. I mean, uh, <laughs> Suki. Suki. Uh, we'll end it there. Suki. Yes. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,